Imagine a kid not getting education over five months. Imagine how much that kid has lost. That journey might not be over. Now, since the Cuyahoga Health Department made all schools virtual, now think that that's at least nine more weeks of not learning. Now you're probably wondering, that's actually, they're still learning because it's online. Well, that's not what happens for many urban communities because they don't have Wi-Fi because 40% of urban households don't have Wi-Fi and a lot of them don't even have good electronic devices. So they might have their phones, but they don't have laptops to work on. So, and they might not even be learning that much because of the Cleveland school district. Their schools are not as good. So they might need tutors. And when there's no parents to help them with the schoolwork, who's gonna help them? Tutors. And where are you gonna get those tutors? At this new center for the Boys and Girls Club. So if you donate, this money will go to getting tutors, electronic devices, Wi-Fi in a safe place. Because homicides have increased by 20% and shootings have increased by 40%. So where are they gonna go? They're gonna go to the Boys and Girls Club because they need to be safe. But here's the thing, because of the huge increase in shootings, children are afraid to walk 200 yards to the Boys and Girls Club. 200 yards, they're afraid of that. And because of all these things, they're not afraid and they don't feel safe to even walk 200 yards. So now we have many kids unsafe. So that's why we need to have some money to make these clubs more appealing so that these kids will come and get off the streets where there's drugs and violence because there's not a lot of money filtering around that whole area. And when there's not a lot of money, people find other ways to make money. And then that just comes in drugs and violence. And then that's not good either. And the last thing is when kids don't have something to do, they create problems. And when they don't, and when they create problems, that's just where bad things happen. And that's where violence can happen. And that's why it's so messed up because you don't hear about this at all because of one thing, because you don't hear news stations talking about urban communities, but you might hear them talking about other communities. And the reason why is because for so long, new stations have not talked about urban communities. It's not okay. Please help now to give some money so that these people can make learning centers and please raise awareness because new stations need to talk about urban communities more. It's not okay for new stations to prioritize other communities over urban communities. Stop. Think about everyone. To many children that come here through our clubs, we service kids from ages as young as six to 18 mm -hmm. years old. It's very important. I think sometimes news media gravitate more to the negative things that have transpired in our community as opposed to the positive. So at times it may show that there's a lot of negative from crime, poverty rate, and things like that, high poverty rate going on in our community, and also even understanding that they're saying that a lot of deaths are transpiring in our city of Cleveland, but at the same time, they don't highlight the fact that we have kids that go to great high schools, graduate in high school rates are up, as well as kids are performing with test scores as well. What the goes out in the media and what the media displays affects my job the most because the youth. The mm -hmm. youth pay attention to things, but they don't always pay attention to is it a credible source or not. So if something get put out and it's not the full entire story, it can also trigger a kid to think one way and make people feel slighted towards the truth at the time. So that happens a lot. Um, virtual learning affect my kids tremendously. Uh, when you think about the neighborhoods that the kids that we serve here and the inner part of central Cleveland, you have to think about the fact that kids do not always have the needs to be able to perform virtual learning. Meaning, if I'm raised by a single mother with six kids, which my mom has, it's kind of hard for her to provide virtual learning resources such as internet, computers, tablets, and things like that for me and my siblings to get the work that we need done completed. So it's, it's rough. It's gonna be a tough time period because there's a lot of uncertainty on how are my kids, how are the kids going to learn? 
if they're learning on their own virtually. And you have to think about the fact that kids um, got out of school early as early as March. So from March all the way up until August uh, until the September time period, kids have not been learning. So it affects them a lot. And also we have to figure out what we're gonna do to bridge that gap and touch those kids that may get swallowed up or get lost because of the virtual learning meaning that I'm not going to the school and not seeing the mentors and things like that. COVID-19 has affected my neighborhood a lot. Um, this past year alone, I've lost around six children um, or mentees to different gun violence. And a lot of that, I think, triggers the fact that kids are just loitering around and just walking around and just being kids, but without nothing to do, you know, it's easy to get into more violence. So COVID has really made an impact on me, the community, the families and everything like that. But I think the most important thing that we need to do is figure out a solution to making sure we move to move in the right direction and providing the resources that we need for our kids. So I would believe that most of our kids may have some type of internet access, but it may be limited basis, meaning it's not the best internet, it's not the best high speed internet, it's probably just something to get them by so they can connect to the internet, but it's not a strong connection and it's probably not that well. Most of our kids have siblings, so, you know, when you start thinking about the virtual learning and with that limited internet, you may run into a problem where there's five kids in the house and five kids need to get on one computer or one cell phone and complete homework assignments. So that causes for a lot of problems because you may start prioritizing like, well, my senior son may need it and then my third grade child maybe get the last or the short end of the stick. Most of our children have cell phones okay. and... Um, a couple of our children told us that if school started today, they would definitely use their cell phone to try to complete work, but they also said they would have some challenges with getting the work and assignments completed because they possibly need um, the support of their teachers as well as tutors to help them complete work, but without them being able to use a computer as well. So using that small device, even though some cell phones are big, is not the same as being able to get to a computer and get the support that you need. So a lot of that is lacking. Most of our parents are really, really good mentors. Most of our parents do the best that they can and also um, think highly of their children and give and provide them with all the resources that they can possibly provide. But at the same time, most of our households are, you know, housed with one single parent who play a mom, dad role, parent figure, mentor, big brother, big sister, everything. So it's kind of hard being a single parent household trying to raise our children after by yourselves. You got to think about the community that they live in. When you're talking about safety, when you was born and raised in a neighborhood, and it has high crime rate and poverty, you don't you don't think of it being nothing's wrong because you become, you know, so adhered to it and used to it that you're you're not thinking like, oh, I want something so much different than this because you're just trying to live your life. And I believe a lot of our families are, you know, are raised off of survival. Um, my mom raised me and my siblings off of survival, meaning we're trying to get to figure out what's going on today and then we can figure out what we need to do tomorrow to figure out what we need to take care of tomorrow as well. Violence has been something, an issue for, for quite some time. Just saying violence has been up now is understatement. If you look at the numbers and look at the history and years, we've been out proceeding over 100 plus deaths in Cleveland alone every year, probably for the last four or five years. You know, so violence has been, a, been up and I think drugs has played a lot of involvement into it. So it has really, really devalued our community due to violence. Think about the safeness of us. I mean, right now we're doing an interview, me and you both masked up when we usually be dapping each other up, pounding each other up, grabbing each other and just showing love. But COVID has affected us because it changed the way we do things. Like even at the Boys and Girls Club, we're not programming the same as we used to be because we have to think about safety first and making sure everyone is safe in order for us to have fun. I think my upbringing has molded me into being the best man that I could be today. It has taught me the importance of mentorship. It has taught me the importance of giving back as well as understanding the form of reaching back and pulling someone up, else up. So my childhood has made me who I am. The Boys and Girls Club was a part of my childhood and it still is a part of my life today. Without my mentors and without the staff there that was raising me when I was a kid, that I would not be here, so. I mean, you gotta think about it. Um, these kids, students that just graduated with 2020, their, their school year ended in March. So they really don't have the everlasting memories of prime graduation as well as you know, walking the stage and things like that. So the impact of COVID since it's been here is gonna change the way we do things for the rest of our lives. Understanding the, um, the words of social distancing. I haven't used that word as forever until this uh, pandemic has occurred. So it has affected our children's lives a lot. It's gonna affect the work and the job that's available for them as well as things that they can do because some of the changes aren't being made.